Hi guys, so you may have noticed that recently there haven't been many Leopard Gecko videos as usual and there's quite a good reason for that which I'll get into in a moment. Another thing I've noticed is an increased number of people asking me for advice as lately their reptiles have been off of their food. Now these two points tie in quite nicely to today's subject, brumation. Now before we begin, I'd like to point out that there is a bit of a debate around whether or not leopard geckos actually brumate, so for now I can only speak on my experience and the information I've gathered from talking to you guys about your pet's behaviour. So firstly, what is brumation? So brumation is basically a survival technique. As seasons change, temperatures drop, UV levels lower and food can become scarce. So in order to survive, a lot of reptiles and amphibians will brumate. In the simplest terms, this means they will sleep more and eat less. Now, unlike the way some mammals hibernate, reptiles do not enter a state of continuous sleep. They go into a state of suspended animation. So how do they know when and how to brumate? Well, brumation is an instinctive behaviour reptiles and amphibians utilise in order to survive the colder months. Now, as temperatures lower, it becomes increasingly difficult for reptiles to obtain enough energy from the sun to aid such things as digestion. So most food is off of the menu, which seems like a bad decision, but when you actually think about it, Go outside in autumn and winter and how many insects and small animals and luscious vegetation do you really see? I'm out here right now and it is freezing. I don't know how our native species of reptiles, which isn't a lot, or amphibians even survive this. I know when I've looked after frogs before, I've read up that they do actually hibernate underwater. Um, I, I would not like to be a frog right now. Anyway, in the wild, reptiles must prepare for a lack of food. So, brumating allows them to slow down completely, lower their metabolic rate, preserve energy, use up fat and mineral reserves, and most importantly, survive. The lowering of temperatures and air pressure actually triggers reptiles and amphibians to prepare to brumate. I'd like to briefly reference a story from John Courtney Smith's book, The Arcadia Guide to Reptile and Amphibian Nutrition. So he had been contacted by a concerned owner in mid-August 2013 about an animal slowing down, eating less, sort of showing signs of brumating, which seemed kind of odd because it was August and it was summer and it was nice and hot. However, come September, the air pressure and temperature suddenly just crashed and forecasters said that these will remain low. So it appears that the reptile was already aware of the subtlest of changes in the temperature and air pressure that would eventually lead to the crash in September. So our reptiles and amphibians are like our little barometers. Now you may be wondering which reptiles and amphibians actually brumate. Now, I don't know for sure 100% which ones do, which ones don't. I would say that if you are curious about a species you have, maybe do a little extra research in it. Look at the annual average temperatures from the countries they're from. That could be a good indicator of whether or not they would experience something which would prompt them to brumate. But one animal I am definitely aware of that brumates is a bearded dragon. So quite a few years back, I had to look after a bearded dragon over December. The owner did not tell me of this behaviour, but I was aware of it. I believe I read about it around the time. And although this bearded dragon did not move, did not open her eyes, did not react to food. I mean, maybe she opened her eyes once or twice. My family was convinced she was dead. I was like, no, she's brumating. And of course she was. Um, so it can be scary, especially if you're not aware that this happens. But bearded dragons definitely brumate. Uh, now I say that, I'm sure people can tell me they don't, but from my experience, they definitely do. And I have read quite a few bits about it. So now you might be wondering, so what about leopard geckos? Now, personally, I think they do to a certain extent. I don't think they go into full brumation like a bearded dragon, but every year I notice that my geckos will completely slow down and eat less. And I don't really worry about it because the whole point of brumating is to preserve everything and to survive and you'll notice when your animal actually does it properly they don't tend to lose 
any way at all. It's actually quite hilarious. Um, so Diego, when we last weighed him, was 101 grams, which is a fantastic weight to go into brew mating. And I'm sure by the end of this, he's probably going to be around the late 90s. He probably, he could potentially not even drop any grams. That's how good brumating is when done correctly. Something that I noticed the other day when I was feeding crickets to my geckos is that Gizmo and Diego in particular actually left a lot of their crickets. Uh, usually when I put in the crickets they will go for them, gobble them all up. And so I left it for 24 hours and you should really remove feed insects after that. And they were still in there. So I did have to remove them. So I thought, okay, maybe hunting crickets uses up too much energy. If you're going to brumate, why waste energy on that? So then I tried with Morio worms and they gobbled them up. So I only gave them about three each. But obviously things like Morio worms, mealworms or wax worms, they're not the healthiest things, certainly not, but they are slow moving prey. So a gecko can be lazy and get the food they need. So... It's good to see they are still eating. I don't think they're in like full brumation at all, but because they're still quite alert. But I have noticed that they have slowed down. And another reason why I believe they do experience some form of brumation is because in the wild, when you look at countries that they're from, you look at the average annual temperatures of those countries, you can see actually in winter, it, it gets cold. And so in order to survive, they must they must brumate. So the question now is, should we allow our pets to brumate? Now personally, as you can probably tell, I allow mine to, especially if they're nice and chunky before doing so. I wouldn't advise allowing an underweight or eel or very young reptile or amphibian to do this as this could have a very negative effect on their well-being. Now I don't actively lower temperatures at all, I actually keep the heat mat on as it is throughout the year, but just the air temperature and the air pressure just naturally lowers. I also continue to offer food as usual and I keep an eye on their weight, which you may be aware of if you ever see any of my weigh-in videos. Now, allowing my geckos to roommate may actually be the reason why my females all seem to ovulate come spring. Because in the wild, a raise in temperature after brumation tends to trigger the breeding season. And this is why a lot of breeders will make sure temperatures are lowered in the months leading up to breeding season. I think if you're in a country that's warm year round and you haven't seen any symptoms of brumation, I wouldn't go out of your way to lower the temperature or anything. You're just probably quite lucky there. If your animal is starting to brumate, but it's recovering from an illness or it's really young or really underweight, then you need to try to mimic spring. So you want to make sure that the light is on for about 12 hours a day. So this mimics the longer days that they would see in spring and summer and also raise the temperature a bit. And you can do this by using a thermostat and also using a ceramic heater. So something I briefly want to talk about before I finish this video is some potential risks when it comes to brumating. So if your animal isn't doing it correctly, it could start to lose a lot of weight. And that might just be that it wasn't brumating in the first place. It actually had an issue, but you overlooked it because you thought it was brumating. And that's why I always say, please do not just assume it is. It's easier if you've had it for quite a few years. And like for me, I know my gecko schedule. I know this is what they do. But there are other things that could potentially stop your animal from eating. And as I said, they shouldn't be overlooked. Another possible issue that may arise is metabolic bone disease. And this is usually just because people haven't been providing the correct supplements throughout the year. And when it comes to brumating, the animal will suffer. They don't have many reserves. And even if, say for example you put a little pot of calcium in their tank. If they don't have vitamin D3, they can't absorb that calcium. So it's going to waste. And in previous years, I have provided them obviously with vitamin and mineral powder that has D3 in it. It's a synthetic D3. And I put that on the food that they will eat. And I've sometimes in desperate situations, I've got them to lick that powder. However, I must admit that having a UV system has certainly helped me this year like I do not even worry about them because they will go up and lick the calcium as you see Diego certainly has and they can self-regulate so I have to say the UV system has certainly helped me worry a lot less during this time of year 
So that's something to look into for your specific species, but I thought I would just bring up a few potential problems that could occur during brumation, just so you're aware. And the last thing I want to point out is sometimes the change in behaviour during brumation can be extremely subtle, so if you're sat there waiting for your gecko to, I don't know, like, dig a hole and go to sleep in it and you won't see it all winter, it's not necessarily like that. For example, my geckos are still alert, they'll still occasionally eat, they just eat slightly less and they pretty much sleep in their warm hide all the time. So I hope you've learned a lot from this video. I have to say one thing I struggled with whilst researching this, because I obviously already knew about brumation before, but I wanted to do a bit more research in this. And it is quite difficult to know whether something is definitely hibernating or brumating, <laughs> because I've always thought that things like the common frog in England, for example, and newts, they tend to hibernate, right? And tortoise, to me, have always been the ones that you put in boxes of straw and they hibernate, and some people even put in their fridge. So is that definitely hibernation, or is that brumation? Because it, when researching about this, it's very difficult to know. If you know the for sure, let me know, because it's very difficult. The internet is a very strange place. However, as I said, not all tortoise hibernate. I don't know why I say that like that, tortoise. Anyway, not all tortoise hibernate. Some stay awake during the winter months. And if you are interested in learning more on how to care for tortoise that do not hibernate during the winter, check out Megan's video over at Happy Tales. I'll leave a link at the end and in the description box below. Go check out her channel. She has some amazing pets and videos. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and goodbye. <laughs>